Located on 225 acres in Garden City, Long Island, Nassau Community College, a member of the State University of New York System, has close to 20,000 students attend the school each year. The college mascot is Leo the Lion, and these are his stories of the school's absolute best and brightest who have graduated over the past 50 plus years. So let's catch up together as the Alumni Association of Nassau Community College proudly presents Lion Tales on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Welcome to Lion Tales. My name is Dr. Linda Nadian and I am a director on the board of the Alumni Association at Nassau Community College and a proud graduate. I am here to celebrate the successes of our alum and together we will share stories that will inspire, uplift, and often amuse you. Each week, I will introduce you to alumni of Nassau Community College interested in sharing their experiences while attending the college and the secrets to their success. Look for many new and exciting events on the Alumni Association social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and our webpage at ncc.edu slash alumni. Or find me on Twitter at Dr. Linda Nadian. Did you know Leo the Lion is the mascot for Nassau Community College? Lions are ruled by Leo and fire. The male lions represent pride while the females stand for teamwork. Together, we are Lion Tales. Today, I'd like to welcome to Lion Tales, Alexandra Ali Ramos, class of 2019. Alexandra describes herself as a super ambitious person who worked four jobs to complete her coursework and degree at Nassau Community College. She is a singer, songwriter, and creative artist. She works to produce her own music that includes writing, producing, and creating beats. She has collaborated with musicians in many parts of the world and loves working with other artists. Ali sings backup with several bands and does modeling work. She is currently working as a heart monitor technician and is the mother of a six-year-old girl. Plus, she cares for more than 10 pets as a hobby. Allie is a true artist and is working to reach her full potential in the field of music. Welcome to Lion Tales, Alexandra Ali Ramos, class of 2019. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so tell us about your decision to attend Nassau Community College. Yeah, so uh, I went to Bayside High School for music, and they were definitely encouraging me to continue doing music, and they said Nassau Community College had a great music program, uh, specifically performance. So I attended uh, for the performance program, and it continued on until I, I left Nassau Community College. Yeah. And what were some of your courses that were a part of that music program? Uh, I remember sight, see, um, sight reading and a piano courses. Unfortunately, it's been a while that I can't remember exactly every course, but yeah, it was... Those two courses that I remember the most. Yeah. Do you still study piano now or, or? Yeah, I actually use the same textbook I use for the class and I use that. Um, I know there's uh, updated versions of the same textbook that I bought. Yeah. So I've been using that as well. And so how do you feel about, you know, when they say practice makes perfect? What do you, how do you feel about that? What, do you, oh, what that type is, of time do you dedicate? Uh, so at one point when I was working at my job in SkyMed, um, the heart monitoring company, gave me less hours. So I kind of scheduled at my home like a routine where I would play piano for an hour and play guitar for an hour. And then after that, I go to my laptop and make beats for a little bit. And eventually that became my routine for six months. And that's where I ended up now starting to do music on my own. Yeah. And how do you feel as far as proficiency in terms of piano and guitar, uh, what is your favorite instrument and, and what do you like to play the most? I would say piano is my favorite because yeah. guitar for me is a bit hard. Yeah. But thank God for, you know, just my notes that I had from college and I use that most of the time as well. Yeah, that's really amazing too. And so the you, you had a guitar course here as well? Or I did not, piano? You did but not. yeah, the piano class was great and they did say to continue on to maybe do guitar and I, that was my next step. Unfortunately, I didn't go, uh, go to that class, but I started doing it at home. Yeah. And yeah. And then, you know, you just practice and you try to, to uh, learn as much as you can. Who, who were some of your most uh, memorable professors? Honestly, I can't remember any of yeah. their names. We always say that. I don't know why we can't. I remember we never it was a remember. lady for the piano class. Yeah. Oh, she was wonderful. She really helped me out all the time, especially when I had trouble in, like, some of the chords or the circle of fifth that I had to memorize. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, she was a sweetheart. She was always helping me out. 
Yeah, because it's a lot to remember. I, yeah. I and I think you know sometimes people pick it up really easily. You know, yeah. I I see my son graduated from a music conservatory, and he just naturally was able to pick a lot up. But he was very good with sight singing and mm-hmm. you know sight reading, yeah. which I think again is like an art form that has to be studied because oh, yes. it's so it's intense. There's a lot to know. Yeah, it's that consistency that helps. The more you do yeah. it, the better you get. And do you find too that you know again on a daily basis, like reviewing it and going over it, makes you stronger as a player? Of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. It pushes me to do better every day. Describe really your passion for music. When did that start for you? Oh my gosh. So I can go back to maybe a couple months old. My mom would play ballads and I'd cry as a baby. And she's like, oh my God, how is this newborn or few months old baby crying for Celine Dion? You know? Uh Um, And then that continued on to me singing at subway stations where there was live bands and at restaurants when they had my favorite song, I'd start performing. Um, And then I'd start performing in front of my family at parties and even my birthdays. And I had my friends, we'd do a whole choreography and I'd sing. Um, And then that led to me wanting to audition for commercials and uh, shows. And when I would audition, I'd be like, oh, I'm a singer too. And I'd sing even though they didn't want me to sing. And they were like, that's fine. Um, From there, that led me to middle school to do the music uh, classes there. That led me to Bayside High School, where I had to audition for that. And then Bayside told me to come here to Nassau to do the music as well. So it's just been, everyone's been like, Ali, just do the music. You're obviously very passionate about it. Yeah, what are some of your uh, highlights from auditions that you've been on? What What is that feeling like when, you know, you either get the job or, or people give you criticism or, you know, constructive advice? Yeah, so... I, I will say NASA definitely helped me with constructive criticism because the professors were very on top of me, especially when we did opera or did a recital. Um, and that definitely helped me with auditions and all that. Um, I remember being in a, a band at one point when I was younger and the constructive criticism there was hard. I would take everything too personal. But now it's like, oh, please tell me if I'm pitchy or I need to work on something else or was I not on tune? You know, it just it just helped out a lot. Yeah, because it's definitely um, it's hard to kind of like critique. But when you see yourself like on video mm-hmm. or you see you hear yourself, do you do you sort of kind of take mental notes? Of course. Yeah, I actually I like to write everything down. Yeah. So I'll put on my headphones and I'll write the time that I didn't like something or, you know, just do it over and I do constructive criticism on myself. And what type of music has, you know, greatly inspired you? So I will say I did a lot of ballads when I was younger, which led to cumbia. And I was in a girl group called Dulce Sensación. And it was like singing and dancing cumbia. From there, I switched to Metallica covers with the band that I did, oh. which was crazy genre then i went to bayside high school to learn opera and then when i got here nasa community college opened up jazz and r&b for me which now is what kind of my niche is i, I kind of do like a neo soul type of style oh, okay and so as far as jazz is concerned uh what are some of the the artists that influence you do you have any like favorite female vocalists or male vocalists that you like uh, from that from that um, genre of of music, yeah, Ella Fitzgerald is my favorite. Yeah, so I will say hands down that it's like the person I would love to one day maybe even record something with, even though she's gone. Yeah, but uh, I'm I'm like I said, I'm going more now to the neo soul. So it would yeah. be Erica Badu, okay, uh, Jill yeah. Scott, uh, Lauren Hill. That yeah. those are like my inspiring artists right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's really amazing. Did you see uh, Samara Joy won the best oh new God. artist and? and I didn't even recognize, like, I couldn't put her face onto her voice. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. It's so good. And I think she went to SUNY Purchase, so she's part of the SUNY system. I think she went to school up there. It's funny because when I was looking at that category, Best New Artist, she was really the only name... I wasn't a hundred percent familiar, but I knew that I knew her from somewhere, mm-hmm. but I couldn't remember where. But the the other artists, I had no, I really was not not sure. Yeah, and it's funny. Do you find that um, I know mostly music when it's from the past, mm-hmm. and I try to know the present? Do you find that you try to know the past because you do know the present because of your age group and that you're more familiar? Like, what are some artists that inspire you, like presently? Present, probably like Sarah Bareilles, Ella May. Usually that kind of style is where I'm going for. Obviously, Beyonce, Rihanna, yeah. you know, pop more there. But they do have their uh, neo soul that they would like 
Love on the Brain with Rihanna is very neo soul right. in a jazzy style. So yeah, but I I love old music. I, a lot of the music now they take samples from old music. Right. So yeah, yeah. anything old and new. Well. It's old, but it's new to me. I love listening to it. Right. And do you do you like vinyl records? I would love to learn more about it. <laughs> yeah. So but, you know, my husband, well, he, my husband's a very big uh, vinyl record collector. But, oh, wow. you know, just even in hearing some of the records on vinyl, you mm-hmm. say to yourself, wow, that sounds so much better oh, my God, yeah. than, you know, just the regular radio. Um, now there's so many platforms to, to listen, which mm-hmm. is really amazing because you can kind of just, you know, click on the phone. And then once you do that, you can hear the song, which I love that. Mm-hmm. You are listening to Lion Tales on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Dr. Linda Nadian, and our guest today is Alexandra Ali Ramos, proud Nassau Community College graduate, class of 2019. So we're talking about, you know, music past and present. And uh, as a singer and a producer, what are some of your methods for creating new songs and beats? Like, what are you going for? So when I- Recently, I just started making beats uh, again, um, and I usually start off with bass and stuff like that because I kind of want to know where is it going to go, if it's going to stay neo soul or pop or anything. Um, and then I kind of just sing to the bass, and then that gives me the inspiration of the pianos that come in and everything else. Yeah. And how do you do? You like to layer the sounds? You find that you're doing that more yeah. often. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm learning piano and guitar because I would love to do things live and have like a. I think the machine's called a loop, and you yeah. just kind of press it, and it records. I mean, sorry, it loops around, and then you just play the next instrument. I would love to do that eventually. Yeah. But yes, I usually just kind of loop around the song and then add an extra instrument. Yeah. And then how are you recording that? You're using your laptop? Yes. So I just got a new one, but I've been using Studio One. So I've been using that system. Yeah. And how did you learn to work with the software? Uh, Friends, luckily. Uh, A couple of them were from Nassau, so they definitely helped me out. Um, And YouTube. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that that's really great because there's a lot of tutorials even for like guitar like certain progressions yeah. um, just learning the chords uh, that's something that that uh, you can go on and you can see make sure that you're playing it correctly mm-hmm. what about TikTok how has TikTok inspired you <sighs> so I'm <laughs> getting to use to social media because yeah. I'm not really a big social media fan. Um, but I have to, especially since I want to put my music out there. Yeah. So yes, everyone's been telling me to do more TikTok videos and I, I've been starting to. I, I still have to get more into it because I haven't been posting enough. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I've i never posted a video, but I do watch the videos because someone sent me one mm-hmm. once and when they send it to you and you you scroll, yeah. all of a sudden you can watch a whole bunch of videos. Oh, so, yes. you know, now I know how to make the spaghetti and, um, you know, ha- having all these funny videos. But there's a lot of music yeah. videos yeah, that I'll... are coming up, too, because that's like a passion of mine. Yeah. So, of course, that's my interest. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you like to see on there? Like, do you like to watch vocalists? What, yeah, what? I like uh, the challenges sometimes that they do have to do riffs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, or they do like a collaboration with another artist and maybe they'll be playing an instrument and you'll be singing it. Um, and then just uh, artists that are showing their songs. I really just enjoy that as well. Yeah. And how would you describe songwriting in like the simplest form? Um, so songwriting for me at first was hard because I just couldn't get the idea of how I'm feeling. Let me get it into words. Um, I'm actually really good at freestyling. So now what I do is I record myself. I'll listen to whatever beat or the beat I made and I'll sing to it. And then I'll finish recording, put back the headphones and kind of write down what I was saying. Um, But lately I have been sitting down and writing poems and stuff like that. Um, Usually with how I'm feeling or what's going on in my life or like I'm really into like eco-friendly sustainability, which I have a blog as well for that. And I'll just randomly write about the earth. <laughs> okay, so yeah. see, well, we have we need we need earth songs. Yes. You know, we really do. Yes. That that's a Michael Jackson earth song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so and then so you do you're you're writing a lot, and then yes. you're keeping a journal of, of future songs. And I have multiple journals, and I've actually just realized that even at a young age I used to write a lot yeah so now I'm just taking a lot of my writings and putting them into songs as well so that's just a whole different type of creative adventure I'm doing with writing yeah and I think you know sometimes not everything fits Mm -hmm. into a song per se but it could still fit into something poetic yeah that comes out of it and so 
are you do you you consider yourself to like a poet like that you would that you are like not against like just creative writing yeah i would definitely say i do poems um i pray to my daughter every night and sometimes i'll do it you know at the top of my head and i'll rhyme so she can enjoy it yeah and she loves that yeah what is your definition really of creativity or artistry what what do you feel that that looks like i feel like everyone has their own niche and i'm still trying to learn mine but I feel like when you're being creative and you're really expressing and being vulnerable, it, it can be anything. In my case, it's definitely just being uh, the peppy, happy, go lucky girl that I am. Um, but at the same time, I've gone through a lot when I was younger. So I do put that in my music and I show my emotions and a lot of my emotions that I'm working on. I'm putting it in a song. So, yeah, my vulnerability is a big one in my creativity. Yeah, and there's an outlet for that, which is great, oh, yes. because that helps you to kind of frame out your feelings, mm -hmm. and then the, that could become, you know, a really big hit song, too. Yes. So do you think an artist can work and, you know, thrive in this current music world? Because it's kind of, it's, I don't know if it's the same as it was. I know that it's obviously difficult in any field, mm -hmm. but when it comes to art mm -hmm. and it comes to creation and it comes to you know singing and music and playing mm -hmm. um a lot of people think that they can do it yeah. but they realize it's very very hard work oh yeah so as an upcoming artist i am my own manager promoter you know the creator and it's a lot of work i i again i started this probably six months ago when i decided i wanted to do this again and i started learning for those six months got overwhelmed paused for a month and then you know what said okay I could do this. I got to just write things down and figure out what I'm exactly going for. I had to write down my goals and see what I needed to prioritize as well. So, yeah, it, it's a process. <laughs> yeah. And who do you seek for advisement? Like, who is your inspiration? Mm, so I, I do email a lot of people, especially like I emailed you guys saying, hey, I just released the song. Um, but luckily, I have a lot of friends that do music as well. Um, I have a friend named CEO. He does podcasting and does his own music and does his own music videos. And he's an editor and everything. I have another friend named Ramzo who's in California who I collaborated with in music. And he's constantly doing music himself and collaborating. Um, I have another one, um, Nani DeBlanco. She does rap and she's absolutely amazing in music business, constantly telling me what I need to do and be on top of myself when it comes to like protecting my own music. So yeah, a lot of a lot of people that I have um, very lucky to have. Yeah, because it's you know it's an industry that is it's it's very dynamic and yes. there's you know such a a dichotomy of people involved mm -hmm. and pieces involved yeah. that you know you want to keep your you know your head above water there. Yeah. Um, tell us about your new music uh, and the song that uh, is up on YouTube right now. Yeah. So I actually. Uh, Again, I started this six months ago, and I met Stefan by Nani, and she introduced me to him, and I was so nervous to be in the radio, um, not in the radio station, in the booth. And he was like, you know what? I got you. I'll write your song. So he helped me out with the song, and I recorded it, and after that, it was just fire in my butt, and I started writing more. I've been going to the studio more often. I am not as nervous as I used to be, thankfully. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so now, um, you know, as a working mom, what have been some of the greatest challenges? Time. I have to prioritize my time for everything. It's scheduled in. I have a planner. I do things on my phone and I'm constantly telling my friends, please remember if I say I want to hang out with you, remind me the day before because I'll forget. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. but it's prioritizing. And luckily she loves music too. So sometimes I'll be practicing singing and she'll join me. So it's something bonding as well. And that's great. Yeah, because it's really important to open up uh, her eyes to mm -hmm. the music world, too, because that's something that you love so much. Mm -hmm. So who has been really your biggest inspiration as far as uh, writing and recording at this point? Um, like the artist that's inspiring yeah. me and, the most And right people, now? you know, maybe people in your life. Yeah. So um, honestly, my friends and family obviously always pushing me to do my best and to follow my dreams so that I will say that they've been my biggest inspiration um, then I have my friend Jawan and Chelsea who 
we're like a great team together. They're actually helping me do photo shoots and stuff like that. Yeah. So they've been helping me out. Um, and then all the people that I mentioned before, you know, constantly are pushing me. I also know Heavenly Kevin, who does his own music. Gloom, who's a producer, who helps me out. And Biz Business, who's a rapper, who's been pushing me to make music videos, which I hopefully do soon. Yeah. And now when you make a music video, where, where do they show that? It basically on YouTube like you put it up on your channel yeah 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 because it used to be that we had MTV and if someone did a exactly, video yeah. you could watch it and, and now, now it's just so easy to put things on the internet and yeah you can have a whole lot of audiences in different wor- parts of the world and so do you think is it a good idea to get to have a YouTube channel oh yes yeah. yes definitely and again about that consistency and all of that uh, putting out there is definitely the result <laughs> you are listening to Lion Tales on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Dr. Linda Nadian and our guest today is Alexandra Ali Ramos, proud Nassau Community graduate and class of 2019. So now, uh, what is your so what is your main passion now post pandemic? We're coming out of this pandemic mm-hmm. and you know the whole notion of live performance and actually going to a venue and seeing a show is will become a reality what what does that look like for you so when i decided that i wanted to do this i started going to jazz clubs because again that's kind of where i want to go for um and i've been putting myself out there and buying the whole band a drink just so they can come up to me and talk to me uh thankfully my friend chelsea was the one that thought of that she bought the whole band a drink they all came up to us and then she was like she's a singer you guys need to talk to her and i've been uh, networking in that way uh, just doing that and then open mic nights I've been doing a lot more I recently went to a Wednesday open mic in RC Dugans in East Meadow and I've met other artists there that also have been performing and they've been telling me you know continue this but it, it's 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 a process you know you got to figure out where you want to go you know I know I went to the groove which is in the city yeah and oh I, I love the music that they have there but for to be in a gig in there, you would have to know multiple songs and just be on top of yourself. With yeah. Everything. One of the big things I noticed, um, you know, even way back when, because, you know, my husband's a professional musician. So mm-hmm. is my son. And like, it's a big part of our life and what we do. Yeah. Uh, live performing mm-hmm. is critical. Oh, yes. And even watching my son audition for school's when you know when he was uh, coming out of high school part of it was i i would listen not to him but mm-hmm. to the other students that came in and most of them had no experience at all mm. live performing yeah i remember one girl said you mean sing it live right now and yeah. they were they were they were saying yes you're going to sing it live right now and she's like i never did that before and then it always stuck in my oh. head that you know we need to give the up and coming musicians this chance to yeah. uh, you know perform live because it really is it's like an entity yeah. and it's something that needs to be kind of learned yes. when like when you go up on stage what are you thinking well i'm automatically nervous but the yeah. nerves are also the same symptoms as being excited right. so i'm like okay my hands are sweaty because i'm excited yeah. <laughs> you know i try to change my mindset to being excited um but i will be honest being so young and performing in front of people at a subway and a train and then being in the Dulce Sensacion and Legacy and the band and then coming here and they're like, okay, sing in front of the whole class. You know, it's like I've been put on the spot multiple times where I'm just like, okay, I, I'm a performer. I, I'm used to this. I love this. And I like that excitement that I get in the beginning. And then once I'm singing, it all goes away. It's like a flush out of my body and I'm just like in ecstasy. I'm finally singing this out loud. <laughs> yeah. So how do you feel about singing competitions such as American Idol or The Voice? I've actually auditioned for The Voice multiple times. I did originals, which my friends keep telling me, stop. Yeah. Pick, pick a good song where it's a powerhouse song where they'll hear all your vocals. But I tend to pick my originals, which is not the best. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, I've done those uh, auditions and, you know, they're... It's, it's hard because they're looking for something, you know, it, sometimes it, they've picked out already a Spanish girl that has blue hair, you know, and then I'm auditioning. They're like, oh, we already have it. Sorry. You know, so yeah. they're looking for something at that time so they can fit in the show. Yeah. Song selection, I think, is really critical. Yes. Like, I know that, you know, watching American Idol for so many years that Simon Cowell would always say the song was the issue because mm-hmm. a lot of songs that you hear 
may not sound the same when you're going to sing it. Mm-hmm. So when you auditioned for The Voice, what were some of the... Did you get any criticism? Did you get to sing so, for them? How does that work? I think when I first auditioned for The Voice, and this was pre-COVID, I was able to actually go somewhere and audition and have someone criticize me and say, we enjoy your voice, but we're just not looking for something like this right now. And then they excused me. But since COVID, everything's been online. So they just kind of email me and say, yes, you made it or no, you didn't. So yeah. it's been kind of like that. And kind of sucks but is what it is for now (laughs) and it's funny because you know my husband always reminds me he's like you know it's reality tv it's it's a television show so it's not like they're they may think they're looking for the best singers Mm -hmm. but maybe they're really just looking for a look or a certain style which has nothing to do with music at all which i always have to try to remember that you know it is about production and it is about being on a television show which yeah. uh, which I think is uh, most people don't realize yeah. and so now moving forward uh, what are some of your primary goals in terms of work and play at this point I just started and I'm still trying to navigate where exactly I want to go um, I've met people that do wedding bands and other people that just do top line for artists um, I'm, I'm still kind of figuring out what I want you know I know for sure, is I want to put my music out there and just have people listen to what I want to show. Uh, um, again, my emotions, my feelings, and ha- what I'm going through in life. And that's kind of where it's going. But I think it's going to grow. I know I've been doing YouTube. Um, obviously, I'm coming to interviews. And I've been going to open mics and having gigs as well. Yeah. Um, and working with bands that need backup singing. Um, so, yeah, there's there's business and everywhere you know you you just got to find it absolutely and you know i i know that even actors will say like robert de niro always comments on the fact that no matter what the job is Mm -hmm. take it yeah because even if he took one and made fifty dollars and took one and made a million dollars he still was able to put himself out there as an artist you know very early in his career and uh you know you see that A lot of it could be luck Mm -hmm. because a lot of, you know, artists say that there was luck involved. But I think talent is also something that has to be present. And, uh, you know, it's something that we could sort of glorify as well, that that you're trying to to move forward with all your God-given talents. Um, How do you feel about inspiring other you know, young musicians? Oh, definitely do it and follow your dreams. You know, I. And if you follow your dreams and it doesn't work out, at least you tried. Yeah. You know, you, you won't wake up when you're 80 on your deathbed and say, I, I wish I did that. You know, you did do it, you know, and if it didn't work out, at least you tried. Yeah. But I think also when you were saying before with uh, being having talent and all that, I think community is also really good because like just my best friend, Chelsea, she started makeup by putting makeup on me when we were 16, made me orange because she was trying to get my shade right. And now she's working in SNL doing celebrity makeup. You know, I've seen her from 16 to now she's 28. And, you know, she showed me that it is possible as long as you keep trying and keep doing it. I would like to thank our guest, Alexandra Ali Ramos, proud Nassau Community College graduate, class of 2019. How can our listeners contact you? Yes. So I have all platforms, um, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Ali Ramos Music, um, and I'm on YouTube and Spotify. You can look for my song, You, and it's me, Ali Ramos. I would love to collaborate with people, too. So if you guys want to collaborate, always message me. I'm excited to do that as well. I would like to thank you for being our guest today. My name is Dr. Linda Nadian, and I serve as a director on the board of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association, and I am a proud alum. Lion Tales is also available as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. More information is online at nccradio.org. Thanks for listening to Lion Tales here on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.